Hi, Alyssa. Welcome. Hi. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. Um, let's see. Hi, welcome. We're just waiting for a few more moments. So go ahead and get settled in. And let's see here. Um, Meeting ID. Uh, okay. Alex, I think you got Alex. Did you get in? Hi. Let me make sure you're off of uh, mute. Make a host. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Unmute audio. Hold on. <laughs> Alex, are you there? I am there. Great. Okay, I think we're just going to wait um, one or two more minutes just to see who else shows up. Yeah, I know it asks for a passcode. That comes through the registration, I guess. Oh, interesting. It didn't just, it wasn't easy just to link and get through, huh? No, because it asked okay. for passcode, and I was like, weird. So let me go see if something else came through. Okay. Did yeah. anyone else have that issue, though? Um, I think they're on mute. Let me unmute everybody. Unmute. Peter, you're unmuted, and Alyssa, welcome. You are also unmuted if you have anything to say. Did you guys get in okay? Was it difficult? It took some time, but it went. Okay, it that's. It's, it's, I know they just tightened up security with Zoom, um, so perhaps the way that I um, set it up, um, maybe ask for passwords. So that's a bummer. But some people are still coming in right now, so that's good. So we'll just, again, thanks for being patient. We'll wait about another minute. Um, just make sure as you're waiting that you do have um, enough space today. Maybe we'll do some stretches towards the end. Um, and so that could look like this, the length of a yoga mat. Um, that size would be fine. So maybe just making sure your space yeah. is clear. Can you see me? And um, oh, I'm gonna mute everybody again um, while we arrive. And then welcome, Jen. Uh, welcome, Liana. Welcome, Liana. Great, you're here. And welcome, Christine. Thanks for being here. So exciting, Nat. Yes, this is really cool. I'm so great to be, I'm so grateful to be back a part of the modern team and just, oh, um, yeah. What do you have to, would you want to share anything? I didn't get to catch the earlier um, talk yeah. that was happening today that was on biofields. Of course, yeah. So we've had two talks so far. So hi, everybody. My name is Alexandra Ginelli. I'm the founder over at Modern. Um, if you've been to Modern and are one of our amazing, um, gosh, I hate to say clients, but it seems so impersonal because we care so much about all of you guys, that we wanted to put together a whole series of talks with both past, present, current practitioners, retailers, um, our wholesalers. Uh, employees and practitioners and just everybody because we believe in small business and we just keep wanting to share healing through that's our mission we're a sanctuary for helping people find home within themselves and if that's here or at modern wherever it is and Natalie was one of our founding practitioners that we just adore and have kept in touch with and love and we're so tickled pink that she wanted to do a talk and do this workshop with you guys so um yeah yesterday uh gosh what day is it i'm losing track i know today's tuesday 
Yesterday we had Gloriana doing biofield tuning, which was really cool. And all of these talks we're going to be posting. Um, so make sure you record it, Nat. Okay, great. Uh, you yeah. can, if not, no worries. And then yeah. we'll post them for everyone who can't see them or wants to listen to them again. Great. Uh, so Gloriana's talk on biofield tuning was really incredible to learn about it. She also does a whole tuning session. And then we also had earlier today a talk with Allison Richard on different stress management techniques and tools. So mm. we did um, tapping, different massages of the like head and a grounding session. It was very, she's wonderful. It was very cool. So, and then tomorrow we have the art of smudging with Courtney, who's with Juju Be Gone. And awesome. she makes these really cool smudging kits and stuff that we wholesale over at Modern. Love and that. And how many more days is the, the full length of all of these talks are until when? We're actually doing it through the end of April. Right now, there are talks being added every day. I'm awesome. just working on trying. Everyone's been a little, like, busy with having kids at home and stuff. So you'll keep seeing things being added to the schedule. We have essential oils for the four pillars of health with Liz. Van awesome. Van. Yeah. This is great. Liz is amazing. I love Liz. And yeah. then I'm doing a talk on energy levels and how to, like, move through them. I'm doing a talk on hypnotherapy. We have a talk by David Miller, who is a physical therapist, on, like, correcting your posture. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. We have some other ones with a, a celebrity nail stylist and manicurist who's going to give a talk on how to keep your hands uh, up to code during this horrible time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, everything, right? I actually just painted my yeah. nails today. But because I'm, I do body work and massage therapy, I can never really, like, have nails or paint. There you go. So I'm like, we. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to find also a massage therapist to do some at home tips and stuff. We have some cool. meditations coming up. So there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline that's not posted yet. So everybody make sure that you can um, just keep checking back in. And if you're on the modern mailing list, uh, we will keep pushing those out and on Instagram too. Yeah, on Instagram, and you're at modern, just at M O D R N sanctuary, right? Correct. No E in awesome. modern. We yeah. leave that for the experience. <laughs> oh, cute. Love it. Well, I'm so grateful to Terrible. be with this again. Oh, and thank you so much. Of course. Of course. Well, Natalie, enjoy. Yeah. I got to go put my baby down, but I love you. Okay, I love Have you. Thank you so talk. much. I can't wait to watch this um, on the recording. I, I have it yeah. recorded, so I'll send it to you. Beautiful. Right. Bye. Enjoy, everyone. Thank you, Alex. Okay. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I actually would love to unmute you all just for a moment here as we um, just gather in and um, say hello. Um, and I would love just to hear, you know, I can see, I can see your names, but if you wanted to um, just say your name, introduce yourself and where are you tuning in from? Um, Christine, where are you tuning in from? Hi, I'm Christine and in New York City. In New York City, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And how did you find out about this? Um, I go to Modern Sanctuary. Awesome. And I love like many of their services. So I, this talk series has been really fun. Awesome, yeah, it's so amazing that we can connect in this way and stay connected and um, I love that place. I was there, like she said, in the opening, I was there for um, two and a half years. I had, um, a bot I had my own private uh, office where I did body work, hands-on body work and energy work. And then I taught yoga in the salt room, which was so, I miss that room so oh, much. Yeah, but I love it. <laughs> um, Liana, welcome. Hey, Natalie. How are you? Hi, great. Thanks thank for being you so here. For, um, thank you. Thanks for having this. Thanks for sharing the space with us. Um, I'm tuning in from New York, tuning in from Brooklyn. Um, awesome. Where at? Um, Fort Greene, Clinton Hill Edge, not too far from Fort Greene Park. Okay, I'm at Park Slope, girl. Okay, very nice, very <laughs> nice. So not too far at all. Um, got over to the park today. Um, it's really nice just to feel the sun and do a little bit of grounding work uh, with the full moon and everything coming up. So um, just feeling charged and ready. And uh, just, again, thankful for you and everybody else in this call just to share this energy and share this space in this really interesting time. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, Peter, did you want to, Peter, welcome. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for, for putting this together and, and hosting this. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm in the Upper East Side in, in Manhattan. So I just got just got in from uh, clapping at seven o'clock for for all the wonderful people that are keeping things going here. Um, and you know appreciate everything you're doing. Too. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in, and thanks for holding it down for the masculine, for the men here in the group. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and who else? Let's see. We've got. There's looks like there's um Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. Where are you Where are you tuning in from? Uh, tuning in from Manhattan on the Upper West Manhattan. Side. Manhattan. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Um, Alyssa. Oh. Did we already talk, Hi. Hi. I'm getting confused. Did we already talk? I apologize if we did. <laughs> it's okay. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this. My, my pleasure. Um, and where did you get in from? I am on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Awesome. All right. We got a little bit of Brooklyn. We got a little bit of um, New York City. Um, who did I miss? Anybody want to say anything? Christine G. Yes. Hi. Oh, that's okay. Hi, how are you? Hi, Uh, wonderful. Thanks for joining in. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, everything's been great. I have gone to Modern a few times, and Mm -hmm. I love it there. And I miss everybody. You're all in uh, New York City. I'm originally from Queens, but I'm tuning in from Long Island. And um, just can't wait to see what goes on. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you all again. Thank you for being here. Um, Again, my name is Natalie Pearson. Um, For the past 10 years, I've gotten into uh, my background is in exercise science, and uh, I was a personal trainer for quite some time, and then I just kind of kept progressing. Um, uh, She just, sorry, she just said, uh, some people are trying to get in. No, I think it's fine. Um, So I just kept progressing on that path, um, and, and really what called to me was getting my um, hands doing some body work. And I got into Thai massage and I took some levels of that. And then I got into energy and did Reiki thing. And um, I just kept building and, and kind of developing myself with these different skills to help people um, to, to train in their body, to connect to their body, to understand anatomy as well. I've taught some anatomy courses. Um, so I really love bringing the science um, aspect of it. And I also love, um, you know, it's really, it's, it's great to get another understanding, another level of understanding. We can feel things, we can feel how something feels, um, but then to also have an understanding of what it looks like or how it works together with the different systems of the body. So um, I've just been merging all of these things together. Um, and I'm so grateful that um, I'm able to share Um, I feel like at this time, even step up more to share all the different wealth of experience and and knowledge that I have in relationship to like yoga and mindfulness and and movement um, to help support anyone who's interested. So um, I do have a free gift that I'd love to give you all and let you know about um, at the very end, I'll let you know about um, a, a new course that I have coming up if anyone's interested in that wants to go um, explore with me a little bit more in a different group container I'd love to share that with you um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, have a screen share um, I did create um, a little uh, PowerPoint I love PowerPoints and so I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll get into it just a little bit of the content and then we'll get into a little bit of stretching and some in some movement does everybody have a glass of water nearby? If not, I, I have some uh, chlorophyll in here, but um, if you, you know, keep your water handy. Water is definitely one of the key ingredients uh, into our fascia. Uh, share screen. So great. Um, I'm just gonna open this up. Can you guys just give me a thumbs up if you can see? Great, thank you so much. So I call this um, connecting for freedom. Um, you know, for me, uh, I, I'm moving in my body pretty frequently. And, you know, once you can get your tissue, the fascia open to a certain point, it's pretty easy to, um, to kind of uh, 
get back to feeling good. Even if you get tense or tight, you know, you have your resources. So um, I, it's important to me that I feel good and I feel um, free in my body. And I want other people to feel that as well. I feel like we've, uh, you know, the previous generations really were taught in a way maybe to ignore their body or, you know, just to be a good worker and to work really hard. And, you know, once you retire, then you can do travel and have adventure and do fun things. But it's, you know, I worked with clients that were a little bit of an older age range as well, all, all sorts of age ranges. And our body has plasticity. The tissue has um, plasticity. It can change. But of course, as uh, we're aging, um, if you haven't been giving your body that stimulus, it might take a little more time. Um, but change can happen. We can, quote, age and, and feel better. And I believe it. And I'm just sharing from my experience as well um, that it's possible to, um, to get older. And it doesn't mean having to live with aches and pains and, um, and, and all of those things. So that's why our fascia is so important. So just again, just a little background, uh, background exercise science. I trained kettlebells. I did Olympic weightlifting. I did a figure competition, which I showed, I put here to like look badass. But um, I, I did, you know, that whole way, get on stage. And um, it was definitely an interesting experience. But um, and then body work, hands-on body work. I offer that and energy work. So I learned a foam roll um, with a medicine ball. So that's what we did at Brooklyn College. That's 10 years ago. Um, and I first got introduced to that. And um, uh, we're going to talk about that. Does anybody here currently already foam roll or um, have a practice in which they uh, work with their tissue? Yeah. Nice. And that is, what's your, uh, okay, I see you. I, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's, that's good enough. That's a, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you can chat. Yes. Bethany, awesome. So great. It's so key, right? Because our fascia, right? Um, it's, it's kind of like, it made me think of the, the Fibonacci sequence, but when you touch a human body, you are touching an intimately connected system composed of virtually all the molecules within the body linked together. And that is our fascia. So, it's like the same map, you know, you could touch somebody at one point and everything is connected, right? Um, so another name that I might use is connective tissue. So there's fascia or connective tissue. And then it's also sometimes referred to as uh, myofascia, but myo means muscle. So that would be specifically um, fascia around the muscle. It is a general matrix, a matrix, right, of, organ of all organization. Without fascia, no living body would be able to exist, nor would have been formed. So it looks, it's there under the microscope, right, uh, microscopic level. It is this matrix, this web um, of these many fibers. Um, it's, it's really incredible. So your spidey suit, <laughs> essentially, we all have our spidey suits underneath our skin here. Um, and this, let's wait for that to go by. The fascial system starts at about two weeks into our developing embryo. And it's uh, as a fibrous gel that pervades and surrounds all the cells. It is the most abundant and widely distributed, and it is a crystallized matrix, like I said. 40% of it is collagen, and there's another component, it's called lubricating ground substance. So you truly, each one of us, from head to toe, there is no separation. And I kind of, I love that as a metaphor as well, that it, it's all one, you know, like there is this one piece. There's no, where is the beginning, where is the end, um, <laughs> as essential kind of <laughs> contemplation um, right here in your own body. And then they've got some just visuals here for fascial maps, fascial lines. And this is the backside. So, you know, Thomas Myers uh, was one of the main people that um, brought up uh, really and dove deeper into um, the fascia. His background was um, 
a, and I, I could share his resource at the very end if you're interested in learning more. Um, he, he came as a background, I believe, as a like somatic therapist, a massage therapist, and really went into this stuff because back in the day when they were cutting up the cadavers and wanted to learn more about anatomy, um, they would just kind of, let's just cut through whatever this stuff is and let's get to like the mo bones and the muscles, you know? And so the whole time we were just cutting around this whole thing that connects every single thing. So what is it made of? Um, there's three main com components to your fascia. Uh, it's made of cells, of course, um, protein fibers, and then another substance. It's just called ground, ground substance. So those three things. And it can show up differently in your body um, in different areas. So it can be circulating connective tissue, which is going to be in your blood or your lymph, your lymphatic system, like your lymph nodes, you've got main ones in your armpits, your throat, your groin, and your thoracic duct. Um, it could be sort of like generalized connective tissue um, and your like the areolar, uh, your adipose tissue, or elastic. Um, and they just all have different uh, degrees of, uh, I would say, like organization. Like some of them, if it's more deep or more uh, dense, it's just like a tighter webbing or a tighter weaving, if you will, versus something that's going to be more elastic and have more give. It also shows up as structural connective tissue. So it's in your cartilage, it's in the hyaline cartilage and your fibrocartilage, elastic cartilage, and your bone. So your bone, our bones are connective tissue. Our bones, it's like, again, one of those things where it's the same thing, but a different form of it. If it's in the bones, okay, this is how it looks here. If it's in the tissue, this is how it looks here, you know, the organization of it. Um, but it's in everything. Um, what are the functions of your fascia? So first off, um, it's definitely for protection. Um, it supports your, your physical structure of your body. It binds together the other tissues. Um, and then it also sends and transmits communication throughout the entire body. So it has your nervous system is woven through it and communicating. Um, so information from your receptors on what you're experiencing, your tactile cues in your environment is giving that feedback, very micro, and sending that through the body. And how do our sig signals get sent faster? How does energy work? Um, water. Water moves things faster. So when you've got good hydrated tissue, mobile tissue, then your body is more alive, you know? Um, and, and this is something that I've really noticed when I worked on people's bodies, um, especially over time. But um, uh, really, it's like, it's like the tissue will become more alive and receptive. Um, and I can feel that, and it's, it's amazing. Um, the functions also are for storage, like the adipose, if it's an adipose tissue, for example, right? Um, or transportation of something, transportation of either cell, cellular information or lipids. Um, it helps as a transmitter of force and a shock absorber, right? So it's, it does have that, that it's called tense, tense integrity, tense, I think that's how I'm saying, tense integrity, but it's like your whole system can um, adjust and stretch and disperse the proper amount of uh, weight needed um, and absorb absorb shock. Um, and it also plays a big role in your immune protection, right? So if it's helping, if it's a part of, of the lymphatic system, then um, it plays, the fascia plays a huge role. Um, so there's different layers of the fascia, right? So the more deep fascia is again, more dense and more organized. It's a more organized matrix, if you will. And that is referred to as the body stocking of the body. And the more superficial fascia, the, you know, so that we all get that like deeper is going to be deeper towards the core or center and more superficial is uh, more away uh, towards the external part of the skin. And that would be um, your adipose tissue, subcutaneous tissue, or your hypodermis. 
So again, there's just all these different layers, as you can see here, this like sandwich of, of connective tissue um, in your whole body. Um, so it's really fascinating just to look at these images of, um, again, keep in mind, you know, whenever we see skeletons, we think of these hard bones, right? Um, but it's alive. Every single like second, your bones, connective tissue, is breaking down and rebuilding. It's breaking down, rebuilding, breaking down, rebuilding, based on the stimulus that you're giving your body. Um, so these are just images with the uh, front fascial lines. So you can see there's like this deeper one here going in your abdomen and your core, down there to the upper thigh, the groin, the back functional line. So there's, there's different um, maps of the fascia, different layers um, that Thomas Myers broke down. And um, in his books, as you can check out, um, he does talk more in detail, of course. This is just sort of a overview, kind of a foundational aspects, if you will. So check out this one, this crossing here, this crisscross, right, all the way down the side body, and then this deeper back line. See how this is uh, the back of your occipital ridge and um, coming all the way here. Uh, if you notice, this comes all the way back up and to the top of the forehead here. So a lot of a lot of times, you know, you get tension, and it, you can even kind of get in here and massage around. It's above the eyebrows where it kind of inserts this next layer, right? So you'll have a lot of tension. So sometimes you can get that, and then the occipital ridge is called, but that big ridge in the back of your head. Everybody can just take a second to feel there. Right, so that's a really key point of tension, um, specifically because that's one of the insertion points, you know, for for the connective tissue. So, um, you know, I'm always doing just like gentle head rolls and all sorts of stretching. <laughs> um, and look how cool this stuff is. So, um, I was thinking, I was like, what can I get as a demo to show to show them? And I was thinking of, I just didn't grab it, but um, like even Q-tips, right? So if you'd like Q-tips and each Q-tip was wrapped in toilet paper. Um, <laughs> we all have toilet paper, don't we? Um, so each Q-tip is wrapped in toilet paper, for example, but then that is also wrapped in toilet paper. And then that's, you know, that's your fascia, a metaphor. But every single muscle fiber, and then that's wrapped. And then that's wrapped, and then that's wrapped, right? So everything's connected. Your what you're sensing, your emotions, your stress level. Um, it's it's this whole system is so alive and responding and intimately connected. And this is just a beautiful image there. So information to know, like I said, there's 13 whole myofascial maps again, by Thomas Myers, and his book is Anatomy Trains. He's got a couple books out now. Um, and then three of the layers go from head to toe, like I said, and cover superficial aspects of the body. Every single organ in your body is covered. And um, your organs, uh, another name for it in some textbooks is your viscera. So if you ever hear that, it just means your, your organs of your body. Um, so there are like in this mesh netting, right? Kind of free floating in there. Um, and it keeps them protected and lubricated um, and, can, you know, contained in their own little space. Otherwise, they'd just be floating all over. So the fascia in your lungs, inside your lungs, it would cover, if you took it out, it would cover the surface of a whole tennis court, which is insane. Um, and then just like a side thought, your emotions and any trauma, whether it be physical trauma, um, whether you, you know, played sports and had an injury or had an accident, a car accident, just different things that can compress and contract your fascia. Um, but the repattern, good news is, repatterning can happen. Um, but in order to sort of get to the level of the fascia, we have to relax our muscles first and then we can release chronic held uh, tension patterns in the body. 
So again, the great news is the stuff is made of water. You know, our body's mostly made of water. And the body's responding to, to what uh, stimulus we're giving to it. So uh, if you're not stretching in your body, if you're not uh, doing some form of dynamic uh, or restorative uh, practice, then your body is just going to kind of layer up more fascia. And that's collagen. Part of it is collagen, um, which is great. We want the collagen in the face, right? We're like a society that wants that. But it, you can, it can, uh, it's dense um, and it's more firm. So you don't want that really in other areas of your body. You don't want your tissue to be become hard. Um, so it's like we have to give you that stimulus, and it's like, oh, okay, okay, we're gonna we're gonna move here um, because. Fascia has viscosity, and um, another thing about that is, you know, if, if you're cold, when you wake up in the morning, you're stiff, right? Your, your body is not warmed up. So the more that we begin to warm up, then the um, fascia responds, and it becomes more fluid as well, which is really cool. So um, factors that can contribute to inflexibility or tightness in the fascia. Um, it can be, again, muscle tension from poor posture, um, you know, just strain and stress. You know, we, we sit, uh, we're a, we've become a society, and I want to just like speak it as if it's changing. So we, we used to be a society that sat all the time, no. um, but you know, we're, we gotta, we're finding new ways um, to, to support our system and not um, punish it over time, you know, because it's just, you you, you don't want to develop more uh, strain on the spine. Uh, other factors uh, have been ways that your body has compensated for injuries. Um, if you've been repeating positions or postures over and over again, like I said, if you've got an occupation um, or if you're an athlete that is doing a specific type of movement again and again, then the body will um, potentially, you know, just create compensation or movement patterns in which it's, it can only do certain things. But then once you uh, do a twist, you know, and all of a sudden your, your back's out for like weeks, you know, because you're used to doing one thing one way. You don't have that full dynamic mobility of the, of the tissue. Um, other factors that contribute could be hypermobile joint capsules. So if, it, if something is actually too hypermobile, um, some scar tissue can um, create that tension or that pull. Uh, trigger points in the body, which I understand really some of the trigger points just as like contracted tissue. Um, you know, we can we can work those out, which is good. So we want to know how to keep this stuff healthy. How do we, um, what do we do to, to give it the right stimulus? What do we do to um, feel more free and open and sensitized and alive in our bodies? Because that's what I'm really passionate about and helping people to feel that way. So um, it's part of it is getting to know ourselves, getting to know our emotional responses, um, getting to know how we respond to stress, to um, certain sort of triggers, if you will. Um, and then being able to kind of bounce back, uh, getting meaning, getting to know, because our body's responding to our thoughts and to our emotions, right? Everything's responding here. So there's a feedback loop. <laughs> so if we're in a constant state too, like we've you know, been really, really, really programmed to be so fearful of, of just so many things all day long. It's like fear, and so we really, we, we, we got to work that out. We have, to, we have to find a way to work that out because our body is responding to that if we think we're in a state of fear, whether we are or not. And that's the thing with trauma, and I'm not a trauma specialist, but um, you know, people do a lot of this work with tissue and, and trauma specifically um, that can help somebody kind of unravel it because there's a whole psychosomatic, you know, it to all of this but um, so getting to know yourself and um, regular stretching also with the synchronized breathing really helps um, so dynamic stretches we'll do a few of these shortly 
um, rolling out. Um, I do have a foam roller. So I don't know if everybody has a foam roller today. Yours might look different if you do have one. And if you do have one, I would totally grab it. Um, and um, But I won't do tons of it if we all don't have one, of course. But that's been key for me. Um, even cardio. Cardio can help because you're mobile and even just like, you know, like be that lady that's like, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, and so, like, that lady at the mall, you know, just, like, getting her arms, getting the whole getting the whole thing in there. But you're getting warm, and you're getting your joints open, and you're breathing, you're synchronized with your body, and that helps to keep it open and healthy. Um, there's different mobility programs that you can do. Tons of personal trainers now are trained with functional movement. I was trained in functional movement training as well. Um, and dynamic movements is also very good. So a full range of motion, for example, kettlebell swings. Um, so I don't know if anybody here has worked with kettlebells. I'm going to say yes. I'm sure somebody here in this group um, of beautiful people has um, knows what kettlebells are or worked with them. But you know, there's dyna it's like dynamic movements where you're opening the tissue. You're like pushing. If I have uh, one in my hand to to drive up for a shoulder press, um, that slack in it. Hold on, I'm just checking the text. Yes, all right, Bethany, I love that. Yeah, it's um, that. That's a really good movement. You know, that's dynamic. It's getting your tissue open and stretch in a kind of rapid um, way from end to end. Um, also, acupuncture helps um, because acupuncture is getting into the needles are going into the fascia, um, into the meridians there, and sending feedback to your whole system to to relax to let go to send energy to clear right all that stuff um there's different fascial manipulation therapies there's fascial stretch therapy um there's um and there's a book and i think i have it at the bottom here a resource called stretch to win stretch to win um it's i don't know how many it's probably at least 10 or 12 years old, but it's a, it's a really great book and it does show, it does show the breakdown of some of these stretches. I think we'll maybe do two of them from the book, but, um, you know, just great stretches to get into the body. There's also something called the melt method with foam rolling. It's a specific protocol. There's structural integrative and body work. Again, I offer some of those um, practices. And again, once we get to um, have contact and touch, um, I do work with clients privately. Um, I can do some online sessions and guided yoga and meditation and, and things of that nature right now. But if anyone's interested in um, that, I can also share my website and we can be in touch. But structural integrative work, um, yin yoga. Yin yoga is very good also because yin yoga is slow and restorative so instead of being this like kettlebell swinging from end to end it's like you do a full you do forward fold and you stay there for five minutes and you just breathe and you're breathing like into the places of tension you're breathing into your fascia and you're seeing how much you can let go right into it so you allow the breath to get the tissue more open and to drop in even deeper. And I've had some really wild, you know, even images that kept, that came up in a yin yoga session of like me when I was a baby that I wouldn't even be able to like recall from my brain, but the body has these memories. The tissue has these memories and impressions. And so especially now, and especially with so much going on, it's really important that you, you know, resource your tissue and you self-care your tissue because, you know, we're, we're going through a lot. We're going through a big change. And we, I feel we need to really upgrade the way that we relate to our bodies and, um, and take care of it and communicate with it. <laughs> um, and so another key thing is also to, to really stay hydrated. Um, I know we all hear that enough. Um, and, and I know that I could still even drink some more water for sure. Um, I, I double filter my water um, at my house personally, because um, for me that it just, uh, I feel better about it and it tastes better. And 
but the more uh, the more pure and the more of a high quality water that we're also drinking the better it is for our body right of course you know where if we are made of water and we're having a better quality uh of water then we'll, we'll feel better of course too and and you know hydration is key for spine health your discs in between your vertebrae uh, are gel-like cushions and so you know we can even feel back pain if if we just need to be more hydrated. Um, so I think, let me just see what the next slide is. And then I may ask if anybody has any questions, but then we'll get into, uh, we've got about 20 minutes to do some, uh, some stretching and stuff. So uh, there's different tools that you can use. Maybe some of you have them at your home or you've used them at the therapists or the, you know, the gym or whatnot. Um, there's different therapy balls. There's foam rollers. Again, I have a standard kind of high density black one. This one is the, I think the 36 inches. Um, there's different sizes. I prefer this one. There's there's the one that's like 18, also fine. But I like the bigger one because you can get your whole body on there. Um, and then there's tons of, you know, foam rollers out there now that have like knobs and like all sorts of craziness. Um, but it's, you know, it's each one is, oh man, it depends on, also depends on your level of activity. How intensely are you, are you like seriously training all the time? Then you probably need to do something pretty deep and intense. You know, um, for me, I'm not training the same way anymore. I do work out. I do my yoga practice. I do some Qigong. So I'm doing, um, you know, some gentle stuff, but I, I still love this thing. I love this. Tennis balls are also good lacrosse balls also good for those trigger points and um i used to teach a class at a pilates studio that was um, like a stretch and relax class but we use the cross balls so you could sit on those on your glutes you could put that on your upper back right and lean against the wall and just kind of get in there but the key is to breathe for all of this stuff if you want something to release you can't hold your breath you when we breathe and when we exhale that is what helps our nervous system get into that that parasympathetic state that i am that i am safe state i am safe to relax and let go of any contracting so um pvc pipe golf balls you know just just go for it <laughs> so when we have um uh, healthy hydrated fascia it improves our uh symmetry of our body um and the alignment the structural alignment of our body um, and it increases our blood flow. We've got faster recovery time. Um, it helps with reduction of stretch mark and cellulite. Um, and then it helps to also break down um, scar tissue um, that can change over time. Like I had a couple, I had a scar here. It's kind of on a weird spot on my arm, but um, it's actually fading away, which is really cool. Um, and again, because you, you could have scar tissue, you know, you could have an injury or have a scar tissue like in your hip, right? In your left hip, let's say. But you're having a symptom of tightness in your right shoulder, the opposite shoulder, right? That's a pretty common pattern actually from the hip to sh opposite shoulder. So um, I'm just saying this to say that you could have, the cause could be in your hip but the symptom is in your shoulder and you think you need to work up here, but maybe it's working down in your hip. Do you know what I mean? Because it's all connected. So just something to, just something to think about and remember. Um, it also helps with reduced risk of, risk of injury. So if you fall, if you trip, you're, you're responsive, you're, you're, you're a little more alert. Um, you're not gonna think about, think about if you're water, uh, if when it's hard, it's more frozen and it's more brittle. It can break so it's gonna shut you know shatter or just have a different response than if it's more responsive and alert and you've been doing dynamic practices um, to to protect yourself in that way um, it also helps with less day-to-day -day pain improves sports performance um, better emotional resilience and stress resilience and then also huge bonus. I'm just saying, but do, like I said, I've been doing it for 10 years. Your skin gets amazingly soft and smooth. And it's so bizarre because you're really like, you can actually take your skin now and separate it from your fascia. Cause it's for most of us, it's kind of like, like it's 
kind of glued together. It's kind of stuck, right? So you want to have that openness. So let me just see if anybody has any questions and then, um, I, cause I want to stop talking so we can get in the body. Um, and if anybody has any questions, I guess maybe just go ahead and, um, share it in the chat. And then if, if you have any thoughts or anything you wanted to share regarding your experience with, um, Fasha. I'll just wait another few seconds if anybody thinks of anything. Otherwise, we'll get into it. Y'all are good. Okay. Okay, great. So um, we are going to get in our bodies. Um, if you don't have, oh, let me just see. We'd love to know more about where the best, where is best to use the tennis balls. Okay. So your question, um, Bethany, is um, about where, kind of like how or where to use the tennis balls. Is that is that right? Um, for me, awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, it depends on where you feel most tight. But honestly, like I said, I love those for the glutes. Uh-huh, back. Okay, cool. So what I would do if I was you, then I would... I would get on a wall and I would put that foam roller or I would put the tennis ball on your back and you can line it up to get it like in on your scapula. So not on your spine, but just lateral to either side of that. And oh my gosh, also what helps is if you, so if you get against the wall, put the ball there and then lean back. And then again, you're just bending your knees and kind of rolling like a bear against a tree um, and uh, breathe. And if you, Give yourself a squeeze, give yourself a hug here. See how this opened up my back there? So that's going to help you get in deeper. Um, you can even you know, leverage yourself to get um, upper traps um, there. Also, a really good one, too, is uh, the front of the pecs and the shoulders to help open up the rotator cuff here. So what you would do for that one is um, I would get on the, how do I say this? I would just get on the corner of a wall like if I open up my door to my room um, and so I could put my head through the doorway but put the ball here in the front of my pec and rub that against the wall if that makes sense um, so I would use it there cool um, I would also use it in my glutes so again get against the wall uh, tennis balls or lacrosse balls are gonna work and uh, whew, the lacrosse so you could start off with a tennis ball maybe and then work to the lacrosse ball if you wanted to go deeper um, and then when you find a spot, breathe into it. If you're like, oh, dear Lord, <laughs> stay there. Just put some pressure as much as you can. Again, you don't want to go into deep pain, but you want to go into, um, you, you just want to go to the edge of all of this, okay? And where you can functionally breathe. Um, awesome. Great question. Um, you're welcome. Issues. Uh, hold on one second. Issues in neck, shoulder, and sciatica. So probably similar stretches. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Liana. Yeah, that's great. Um, neck and shoulder, I do the sciatica part. I would say definitely get in that glute, get in the, get on the wall and uh, lean into that tennis ball or the cross ball. You can do it on the floor as well, but I find that I just, you know, you can't leverage your body the same way to, to maneuver it, right? If you're on the wall, your feet are on the ground, you can kind of like, explore you know so so allow yourself to explore there's no wrong um you're not doing anything wrong i would just say you don't want to put pressure on your spine of course um i hope that helps um and just stay hydrated you know even even maybe before you do something like this make sure you've had a little bit of water definitely have water after just like any massage right it's going to help uh, smooth and move things out if there's been tension or stuck energy, uh, stagnant energy, stagnant chi, it's going to help fl flush it out. What about the foam rolling balls they sell at Athleta? Oh, I don't know about those, Alyssa. Um, I don't know if anybody else knows about those. Um, I haven't seen foam rolling balls. Is it just basically like a bigger version of like some type of ball? Is it can you answer um, that? Is it like is it like um like a rubber ball, Alyssa? Uh, they're sort of the same size, just a lot um harder. Yeah. 
Cool. It makes sense. It's probably I can I I can imagine that it's bigger than a lacrosse ball, but it's the same thing. Maybe they made it like an in between variation and just you know another product to help people and sell it. But um, I'm sure they're great. I, I get that. I I mean you you could get that or it's literally get a tennis ball or lacrosse ball. Um, I got mine before at like Paragon Sports, you know, back in the day. Um, and they're great. And then one thing you can do is um, I <laughs> I made my own. Um, two tennis balls and then like duct tape that thing um, but then you put that along your spine and you can lay on that and breathe and so it just gets that pressure you know it's like your own little like chiropractor <laughs> just get creative um, but I hope I hope that definitely all of these are great tools for sure so just feel free to explore again you're not gonna um, do anything wrong you just don't want to go right on the on the spine, I would say. Cool, Leo. Um, so let's stretch. And if everybody, you know, I, I would love to to go a few minutes over if everybody has uh, a little bit of time. So um, we're going to, I'm just going to do a minute of foam rolling here just to show, the because uh, I always do a same sequence. By the way, I do have a foam rolling class on Fridays. I do Zoom. Um, so I'll, I'll send all that stuff to you guys if you're interested. I would love to see you again and help you. Um, it's a sequence that I always do. Um, and so I always know what, like, I don't have to think about it. Right. And I think that's the key thing for most of us for like, I, I, you get stuck at either you don't know what to do or you just, it, it's not like a sequence. So once you get it down, then no thinking, uh, some cat cows, we're gonna do a hip opener, spinal cord roll down, and we'll end up with some standing, uh, deep front body, uh, fascial stretches. And then a final stretch called the matrix stretch. So let's do that. And then again, the very bottom, I do have some, uh, a couple different books um, for, for reference resource if you're interested. Um, so I'm just gonna demo this foam rolling and I think I'm gonna move the camera back. Okay. Okay, so one one key thing I always start on my back with the foam roller. And I guess the one thing I will say about a uh, foam roller is you don't really ever want to foam roll on your lumbar spine, which is the bottom spine. But I'm just going to do a second here just to demo. This is how I always start. So again, I'm I'm just picking up my hips. And it's all about the breath. And I'm, hug I'm giving myself a hug in the front body to open up the back body. And then it's about, you know, how much weight can you put into that, right? But this is going to help break up any of that hardness and tension from that we carry in our upper shoulders and our between our back, our scapula. And so I always, you know, do that and I get some, I usually get some good cracks out of the body, out of the spine. I do both sides here. And then what's a really nice one too is even just to give yourself, you know, more of a yin um, or a yin restorative stretch, you know, you could just kind of lay here for a little bit, take some breaths in. And again, it's about helping to relax your muscles and relax your nervous system so that it can begin to unravel. Um, What's another one? I, I want to show you. It's like I want to show you one that wouldn't be obvious, but for your glutes, you know, you can uh, sit in heat, sit on it, and then whatever side of the glute that you want to roll out is the leg that you would uh, cross over. So I'm leaning into my right side with my right leg crossed over, and by doing this, I create more of a stretch in my glute to get in there, and I'm breathing. And you've got about three main glute muscles. So you want to get the outside. This will help with the sciatica too. Um, and just getting that stretch open. And then the other side would be your left side, breathing and stretching here. 
And then what, what I love about these tools, though, it, it gives you information about your body, right? You develop more awareness of your body and what's going on. And, and nothing can change in our lives, no matter what it is, unless we have what more awareness of whatever it is, whether it's a habit, a pattern, a way of thinking, uh, the way our body feels, oh, I've got more tension over here, let me address that, you know, it's like, whoa, whoa. so I love these practices because they simply give us feedback of, of more information. Um, and then I want to say, you know, I would do, I would do the whole back body first, I always do a back sequence, and then I'll do the front sequence, but I don't, again, I don't want to take too much time doing this, but I want to demo that uh, this is a great tool, a great resource, and um, you could use this, you know, before you uh, work out, for example, um, it would be a good time, whatever the workout looks like for you, but you could kind of do it a little more rapid, though. You don't want to spend too much time opening it, but it's a great restorative one to take more time with, so af after your workout, you know, um, or um, at the end of the day, if you come home and you want to watch Netflix or something, or we already are home, <laughs> so you could roll out any time of the day. Um, but do you know what I'm saying? It's like multitask. Allow yourself to relax while you're doing watching some Netflix and and foam roll. Um, highly recommend it. So if you're with me, let's do just a couple stretches here. Um, let's just do some cat-cow. So coming to all four. And then really spread your fingers, um, palms under the shoulders, knees under your hips. And then drop your belly. Inhale, look up. And then exhale, round your spine. Really push yourself away from the floor also and scoop in your chin to chest. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, round. And let's just do one more round. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, round the spine. And then come back to neutral. And then I love this one too, where you can just kind of drop your chest through and roll those shoulders out. So if you can see, I hope I'm, but I'm just dropping my chest. So it really opens up that, starts to open up the back of the scapula there. Let's go ahead and come up to um, our knees, a kneeling stance. And this is a good one too. So you're gonna step one foot, I'm going to just change this a little bit for you. So you're, you're going to bring one knee forward, and you're on one knee on the ground. If it's possible, you could put a pillow or a yoga mat or, or something there. And I want you to actually go into a deeper stretch. So, like, actually step this foot uh, more in front and a, a little bit wider. So if it's your right knee, you're going to put it kind of outside of your body, if that makes sense. So it's not narrow, it's kind of wide. Yeah? And then what we're going to do is lift the opposite arm. So I'm getting this whole stretch on the front of my hip flexors and the fascia here on my left side body. I'm reaching my arm up to the sky. And I'm going to inhale here. And then I'm going to exhale. I'm going to reach for the sky. I'm, I can't really move anywhere, but I'm going to squeeze my back glute and reach for the sky, breathing in. Like I'm wiggling my fingertips, reaching for the sky, reaching, reaching, reaching. And then let's exhale. You wanna drop in towards that opposite thigh and reach to the sky. And then I inhale back. I'm trying to figure out if this is a, the view here. And then I exhale. See how I'm rotating my torso towards this thigh and I'm reaching to the sky. So I get that hole from my fingertips here to the back of my toes back there, that whole fascial line is getting stretched. It's inhale back and exhale, sink in. Good. And then let's just switch legs. Again, we're sinking up the breath with the movement to help it open. So a nice big step forward and then nice and wide. Right arm is in the air or opposite arm, whatever one you're doing. And then again, stay here for a moment, squeeze your glute, 
by squeezing our glute that opens up this front hips here and we're reaching to the sky inhale stay there exhale reach 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 for the sky you might feel a little stretch a little tension there breathe in and then we're going to exhale twist to the opposite thigh reaching so you're still reaching for the sky still keep everything engaged inhale back exhale inhale back and exhale lean in good and inhale back good so that one's um nice to really open up the the whole hips here the hip complex of the fascia here but then also it gets that hole from every single finger uh tip to the back toe right so we're getting that long and then that spiraling action helps it to open as well because you saw those images with the crisscross right so we're getting that to open good Let's do um, just two more things here. If everybody has a few more minutes, we'll keep going. So we're gonna do something called like a spinal cord uh, roll down. And it just helps to open up the, so you can't see my head, but I'm gonna, you'll, you'll see it in a second. So I'm just rolling down, so I'm standing tall, feet are hip width apart, and you're gonna tuck your chin and you're gonna to begin to just roll down. So you're heavy in the arms, heavy in the head. And let's walk out to plank. Walk out to plank. And if you can, when you get there, go ahead and drop your hips, drop your knees. And if you can open your chest, if that's available to you. And what I want us to do is inhale here, and then exhale, look to your right, you're trying to look over behind you. Inhale, and then look the other way. And then inhale back to all four. Tuck your toes, downward dog. And then walk yourself back. And then roll yourself up to stand. And let's just do that one more time. So we're opening that whole back body there. Exhale, chin to chest, rolling down. And then you're gonna walk yourself out to plank. And I want you to swing those hips down. Release your toes. And then you're gonna look to the right. Inhale, look to the left. Inhale, center. And then exhale again, hips are back. Tuck your toes, push your hips back. Walk, 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 and you're going to roll yourself back up to stand. Again, head and neck are heavy. They are last to roll up, scooping your pelvis, and then come to stand. And then I'm going to get this a little bit taller here. So we're going to do just two more stretches here, basically, before we close. Um, so you're standing with your feet hip width, and your feet are facing forward towards me towards the computer screen and you're going to inhale lift your arms up above you uh, palms are facing one another inhale here and then you're just gonna reach back so you want to lift up and reach back inhale tall one more time exhale so kind of engage your core a little bit so you don't just fall onto the spine but you're reaching Trying to open it all up and then come back to center and now you're going to turn your toes out kind of duck feet your toes and by doing that little duck feet um, toes turned out um, you're we're gonna get like the deeper fascial lines okay so toes are turned out arms are overhead inhale lift up and then exhale reach open up keep the throat open exhale Inhale, reach, breathe, exhale. Good, and come back to center. Good, and then drop that, um, drop your right arm. We'll just kind of mirror one another. And this is for that nice uh, side body fascial stretch. So you're breathing in here, and then exhale, glide that one arm down your body. We're breathing here. And then notice where you feel the tension. Maybe it could be more kind of sticky at the ribs, or maybe uh, more likely it's sticky here at the top of the, the pelvis and the hip there. So just take a breath in, 
Breathe out. Send the breath there. Exhale. And then I want you to open up. I want you to lift your palm if possible and look up to the sky. It's kind of, might be tight. Exhale, palm is down, look down. So again, it's that rotational kind of spiraling uh, thing happening. And you're going to inhale, open up. We'll look up. And exhale, spiral down, look down. Inhale up, use your breath. Exhale, other side. So again, opposite arm is gliding down. We're focusing on this, the fascia of the side body there. So take a moment, sense where you feel the tension or the strain start to come in. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. We're gonna lift that palm up to the sky again. Inhale, kind of open up, rotate that spirally. Stretch, exhale, palm down, look down. Turn your head and neck too. Get all that kind of the fascial lines open there. Inhale, exhale, inhale up, exhale, arm down. Good, just do, do a couple of shoulder rolls here, kind of integrate, breathe, and exhale. Good. Another one um, is just like I said, the matrix stretch. Um, so I'll just demo it. Here you want to have feet kind of really wide. Let me, I wish you could see my whole body, sorry. It's, you know, spaces here. So your feet are like a little bit more wide and grounded. And then let's lift our arms up, inhale, fingers are spread, really lift the fingers. And then we're gonna exhale the breath out and then I'm just reaching down and letting go. And then I'm inhale, kind of sweeping these arms up. Inhale, exhale. Let it go. Inhale, reach. So this is kind of like the Keanu Reeves matrix part there. Exhale down. Inhale, open, open, open. Fingertips still open. You're breathing. So we're getting all the whole front superficial and deep. Exhale down, getting the side. Inhale. Let's go the other direction. So you would exhale, reach, bring it down. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, let's do one more. Inhale, big, big, big. And exhale, let it go. Good, inhale up. And exhale, bring the arms down. Good. And um, yeah, so, so again, that was just sort of like the whole dynamic of just from fingertip to toes, really reaching and really stretching across the body, right? Getting those cross lines, getting these side body lines, so getting the whole front is open, and then we got the back open. And so that's just sort of, you know, work, us working with the, um, the more superficial lines, but that are containing this whole, this whole thing. Um, let me think if there's anything else. I mean, definitely doing breath, um, doing some breath helps, helping to self relax or, um, you know, if anybody does, uh, has a meditation practice, then, um, uh, being able to sort of what I would call like self-regulate or do a, a guided relaxation meditation is, is so helpful too. Like I'm, you know, starting at the crown of your head I'm I'm relaxing my mind. My mind is relaxed. And you could just go through. I'm relaxing my face. My face is relaxed. I'm relaxing my shoulder. So getting, kind of helping your system un unravel and unwind is a, is a really valuable tool, especially now and especially moving forward. Um, I hope this was um, helpful. I hope this uh, supports you. Um, Maybe it sparked something for you to get into your body even more. Um, and I just, I thank you for, thank you for being here tonight. Um, let me just check the messages. Um, awesome. Oh yeah. And let me send everybody, um, if you sit tight for a second, you're so welcome. You're amazing. 
Thanks for being here. Um, let me send you all my link. I've got a free gift for you. Um, and let me just stop share for a second. Um, do 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 my free share. Actually, I mean, I have your, ah, oh, thank you, Peter. Awesome. My pleasure. I have, you know, I have your, I have your guys' email. So if that's okay with you, I'll just send you a link. It's a free PDF download. It's um, uh, the five steps to accelerate your healing now. So I, I break down some simple tips that don't cost anything, that you have the power within your own beautiful consciousness and beautiful body to help you um, to heal and accelerate healing in whatever way that looks like for you. Um, I also have some, you know, weekly classes that I'm teaching, such as yoga. Um, I teach at the Assemblage, so I'm doing some online stuff with them. Um, once a week, I actually have a class tomorrow, if anybody has heard of the Assemblage. Um, I, I, work, I work at the Nomad one, but um, we're all closed down. But we've got a whole great online uh, resource for people as well. Um, so I teach yoga. Um, a little bit of Qigong, breath work. Um, I've got a breath work, like an eight day. Uh, it's only $44. Um, I'm just getting some enrollment, but it will be capped at 20 people. But it's going to be a fun group. I'm going to teach eight yogic techniques for breath and different types of pranayama to help you, um, you know, be more resilient, uh, boost your immunity, um, calm your mind, um, and, you know, connect to your inner peace. So if that's something interested, uh, if you're interested in that, I'll send you the link to that as well. And you can check it out. And um, yeah, uh, let me check the message. Ah, you guys are awesome. I'm so grateful. Like, I mean, you know, with everything, it's all about our mindset. And, you know, it's a whole new world where that's being birthed right now. And um, I'm so grateful to be here with you. Like, we need one another. And um, I'm so grateful that we can connect in this way. And um you're welcome. Maybe let's just take a moment to breathe in. And exhale to breathe out. Relax in your body, relax in your belly and your shoulders. And just taking a moment to give yourself a pat on the back. You know, thank you for, for showing up for something. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day to, to be here as well. So to make the group. So much love, y'all. Um, I, I will send you just like my social media stuff too if you want to follow along. I've got tons of different movements I'm always doing and all sorts of fun things. So um, much love. Thank you to Modern Sanctuary. Thank you, Alexandra. And definitely stay tuned to all of their wonderful uh, resource of practitioners um, helping us all. <laughs> all right. Much love. Peace, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.